Welcome to lesson 4.2 on prisms and cylinders. This lesson is called Exploring Nets, and what we're going to be doing here is something we're going to repeat from grade 6. You're going to build objects from nets. However, this time we're going to be doing things which are a little bit more complicated. So uh, you'll see you need a pair of scissors. You're going to need masters 410, 411, 412, and also an assignment masters 413 to 420. They will be provided for you. You're going to work with 410, 411, 412 masters first. So those are the things that you're going to be building, three of them. The first thing we have to talk about is why do we use nets? This is not necessarily just because we, you know, we want to wreck your day, but there are places where nets are used. If you want to go into the trades, one of the areas in the trades where nets are used a lot is when you do anything involving sheet metal. You lay out boxes on sheet metal, you spot weld them together, a lot of this stuff, um, desks and stuff like this, if you have to make desk drawers out of one piece of sheet metal, a filing cabinet is all, the sheet metal is bent into different shapes to form the walls in the top. This is all done with nets. Secondly, if you do anything with sewing, fabric, if you get patterns in sewing, you put them down on the fabric, you cut it out, and then you sew them together, and that will help you make whatever you're, you're actually uh, going to make. If you go into, the, into what's called the upholstery business, Oh, there's a bad word to spell. Upholstery business. Okay? It's UP, not AP. <laughs> okay, and it's only got one piece. Anyway, don't worry about the spelling. A-P-H-O-L-S-T-E-R-Y, by the way. Anyway, if you go into the upholstery business or you, anything where you're making um, covers for couches, for chairs, uh, Chesterfields, sofas, anything like that, this is also going to use these things because you'll cut them all out and then you'll fold them and sew them in place around uh, some of the furniture. So, let's look at the following net. One of the things you have to be able to do is tell me, without ever doing it, will this net fold into a polyhedron? Now, in order to fold into a polyhedron, it cannot have any overlapping or any holes. So it must be like a dice. Totally six sides, no gaps, nothing. Can't be an open-ended box. So if you take a look at this, will this one actually fold? And you have to think about it. All right. See if it works. In this particular one, does it fold into the net? Yes, it does. Now, what does it look like? Well, here's your base. And we've got one, two, three, four triangles. And when you have a single base and they're all surrounded by triangles, you know we're going to get a prism. So you're basically going to get something which has the four legs on it, like that, with the base on the bottom. So we have a square pyramid here. Now, I'm assuming that the base is a square. If you measure it and you find out that it's not four equal sides, then you would call it a rectangular pyramid. Now, take a look at this one. Now, in this case, I'm going to give you a copy, and I want you to cut it out, and I want you to fold it properly, and I want you to tell me what you have created. And you might be able to do this without actually doing it, I mean, actually physically doing it. So I guess the question is, what does this create? Well, in order to name it, you'll notice right off the bat that we've got a base here, and we have a base there. Because we have two bases, and they're joined all by rectangles, we know we're going to have a prism. Now take a look at your bases. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That means we have six sides. The prefix for six is hexa. This is hexagonal. Prism. Okay, now what I would do is I would give you this, and I'd cut it out, you'd cut it out, and you put it together, and I would mark it. Here's one here. Does this fold into a net? And what it if it does, what will it be? So I want you to predict it, and then I want you to cut it out, and put it together. Well, again, you take a look. I've got opposing bases, which means it's going to be a prism. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's octagonal. 
so have an octagonal prism. Now, out of these two, which one did you find to be the easiest? And which one do you find to be the more difficult? Well, since the octagonal has got eight sides, I will assume that the most difficult was your octagonal. However, you may disagree. Now, what must be true about the edges before they can be joined properly? This is the key to making a proper net turn into a polyhedron. If this is going to work out, this side here and this side here must be exact. This part right here is going to join on to this part right uh, yeah, right here. Actually, it's not going to be that one. All right. But this part, they must be the same. <laughs> so if you take a look at the tick marks here, this, 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 and that, and that have to match these ends because that's what's going to join onto them. All of your lengths, like this side and that side, are going to join together. This and that are going to join together. If those lengths are different, it won't work. So what must be true about edges before you can join them? They must be congruent. Remember, congruent is just a fancy math word, which means they must be the same size. So this lesson is more about exploring than about giving responses to questions. So I'm going to sign page 180, questions 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and I'm going to give you a whole bunch of nets. Don't lose them. Your job is put those nets together as it works in this page. And as we go through them, we'll mark them. And uh, obviously, for this lesson, if we are ahead of schedule, uh, we would be doing more questions and more nets. If we're behind schedule, we have to cut down the number. But here's your assignments. Get busy on them using the nets that I've given you. And we will see you in Lesson 4.3.